density. Density is D. And density is going to be uh, mass over volume. Mass divided by volume. Like so. And shorthand, M over V. Now I've got some densities over here. And uh, let's see, yeah. Um, one density that's important to remember is going to be the density of water. So I will box that. And it's giving the density as in units of grams divided by centimeters cubed is going to be the number 1.00 and the units grams per centimeter cubed. And then I'm also going to write it with a different set of units. I'm going to write it as 1.00, same number, grams per milliliter. And these numbers are the same because one mill milliliter is defined as one centimeter cubed. So another way of saying that is one milliliter equals one centimeter cubed. And uh, different metals have, are, tend to be more dense than water. And many liquids, though not all, tend to be less dense than water. So ethanol is a liquid. And all of these, yep, all of these are metals. So the metals with a higher density than water will sink in water. So that's what density is. Now let's do a calculation of density. It says a lump of metal has a mass of 215.8 grams and displaces 19.1 milliliters of water. Identify the metal. So D equals mass over volume, M over V. Our mass is 215.8 grams. Our volume is 19.1 milliliters. And I encourage you to bring your calculator to these uh, lectures because uh, always, we'll always be using it. And uh, so 215.8 divided by 19.1, I get the answer 11.29. I'm going to just write it to three digits, 11.3. And this is important. Almost all numbers in chemistry have units, and uh, I is very much. Uh, and now in uh, my course in particular, after you do a calculation, you always want to go back and reread the question to see if you've answered it. I haven't answered this question yet. It says identify the metal. Now I have to go down here and say, well, the density of lead is 11.3, so the metal is lead. Okay. The metal is lead. So that's our first calculation. This problem is what's called a companion problem. And Companion problems, I will, uh, the abbreviation for a companion problem is capital CP. So companion problems are additional practice. That does not have to be done when you turn in your lecture outlines. You can leave these pages blank or leave them out. So don't take the PDF of them. Uh, the only reason, and I think it's, there's a very good reason to do it, but the only reason to do this problem is if you need practice to make sure that you can do a density calculation. But you do not, that, that, that practice is optional. So when you do the lecture outlines, 
you do not have to do these problems. I suggest that you do the problems, but you don't have to, okay? And you'll see that one of the things I try and do is uh, whenever there's a problem, uh, a lot of times there will be companion problems uh, to work as well. So we don't do that one. Now let's talk for a few minutes about units. Um, there's a set of units that I'm showing on this slide that are typically what we use in this class. And um, let's see. Yeah, so I don't think there's anything else really to say about this other than these are the typical units and almost everything we do is in these sets of units. So no notes. We also have a bunch of prefixes and these you will have to memorize. Um, and in particular, I'll tell you the most important ones to memorize. So kilo, centi, milli, micro, and nano. Those ones show up a lot in problems. So if you know what they are, it'd be really helpful. There. So those are the ones you have to memorize. The other ones, uh, every once in a while you'll see a pico, like a pico liter or a pico meter show up, but uh, it doesn't happen as much. Oh, uh, question, how do you identify companion problems? As I go through the lecture notes, I will identify them for you. Okay, and hopefully that answers your question. So, and I'll write CP right on them so you know they're companion problems. The other way you identify companion problems is you'll see two problems that are similar. The second one's usually a companion problem, though that's not always how it works. Okay, so now we are at a very important part of the course. It's day one. They are conversion factors. We will do 200 plus conversion factors and maybe 300 plus in this course. So identifying and knowing how to use conversion factors is very important. All a conversion factor does mathematically is it changes one set of units into another set of units. And examples of non-chemistry unit conversions are going to uh, be uh, include statements like this. So uh, 100 centimeters equals one meter. This is what's called an equal statement. And that's a little arrow pointing to this. So this is an equal statement. That just means there's an equal sign in it. And it tells you two things that are equal to each other. Two things that are equal to each other. And so uh, like one week equals seven days. That's one we're probably pretty familiar with. One gallon equals 128 ounces. Yeah, maybe we have an idea about that, but we have to Google it to look it up. 100 centimeters equals one meter. Uh, that you can look at a meter stick to find. Um, now, uh, what we need to know is that uh, any two things that are equal to each other any two things that are equal to each other can become a conversion factor. Can become a conversion factor. And let me show you how that works with this example. And this is an example of a non-chemistry conversion problem. How many gallons is 26.7 ounces? Well, our process for doing this is, okay, we start with what's called the given. The given is a number in the problem
that we start with. And the given here is 26.7 ounces. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw like a little plus. Uh, once we get more to, to late, later problems, you'll see that this is what's called the picket fence because it can have multiple pickets in it. And it will, well, it's also called the railroad tracks. But it's my approach to solving unit conversion problems. Now, um, the, the unit conversion problem that we need is based on this equal statement. It says one gallon equals 128 ounces. And to turn that into a conversion factor, I turn it into a fraction. So, and this says one gallon, there is one gallon per 128 ounces or there are 128 ounces per gallon. So these two things down here are my unit conversion factors. And that just means that when I put them here as uh, in a fraction, that they will change my units. That's what a unit conversion factor is. Okay, so we have two choices. We have this one here to the left or this one here to the right. We choose the one that we want based on the fact that the units will cancel out. So that means since I have ounces on the top, I need ounces on the bottom. And I'm going to use this one that I just circled. And it says 128 ounces equals uh, with on the bottom and one gallon on top. And then I say it's equal. And then to solve the problem, I multiply by all the numbers on the top. I divide by numbers on the bottom. Multiply numbers on the top, divide by numbers on the bottom. I lost a little bit of the page there. There we go. And so using my calculator, I have 26.7 times 1, so we don't have to do that, divided by 128, and I get 0 0.20. Well, uh, you see all these numbers on the calculator? We're only going to write down three actual numbers. So 0 0.20 and that 8 is going to round to a 9. 0 0.209 gallons. And that is our first unit conversion problem. One of over 300 we will do this semester. So excited, I know. All right, any questions about that? Okay, well, 299 left to go. So here's another unit conversion problem. It says convert 96.2 millimeters to meters and kilometers. The number in the problem is going to be the given. 96.2. And those are millimeters. And if I go a couple pages back or I have it memorized, I can see that one milligram equals one times 10 to the minus three grams. We can also say <clears throat> one millimeter equals one times 10 to the minus three meters. Okay, so that's my equal statement. I 
want to turn it into a unit conversion factor, that means that those two things are going to go above and below each other. I want my millimeters to cancel out. So of the two things, I put millimeters on the bottom. I want units of meters. I put my meters on the top with the number that goes with them. And now I have just converted my units or I've set it up. Now we have to do the actual calculation. Now, using your calculator, <clears throat> I got a question earlier, do we need a TI-84 calculator? No. All that's important is whatever calculator you get, you know how to use. <clears throat> um, question, are these companion problems? No. Uh, these are, uh, so let's say this. Now I understand your question. How do you identify companion problems? Companion problems are the ones that I don't do. And companion problems are the ones that I write CP next to. So we will not do this one in my lecture. You don't have to do it and write it in your lecture outlines when you turn them in. So basically anything I do, you have to do. Like that's, if you're looking for a short answer. All right. So... Can we include companion problems in our lecture notes? Yes, that would be great because that means you're getting additional practice. Yes. Uh, do I have this video pinned? Oh yes, it's spotlighted, good. All right. <clears throat> okay, so you have to know how to use your calculator. So 96.2, that's no problem. Now I need to multiply times one times 10 to the minus third. On my calculator, on my calculator, I enter that in by answering one, then hitting the exponent function, and that gives me, oh shoot, let me try that again. So 96.2, I got a little carried away there. So first I have to do the times button, then I enter one, Exponent, I don't enter times 10 to the, I enter one exponent, then I answer three, and then I hit the plus minus button right here, and it puts a little minus. So one with an uh, minus zero three, that is one times 10 to the minus three on my calculator. And uh, if you don't know how to enter in exponentials on your calculator, please come to an office hour and we will work through it together on your calculator because that's an important part of this class. Anyway, now I hit the equal sign. I get 0 0.0962. Uh, and those are units of meters. And sometimes what I like to do is I like to cancel out my meters, my, sorry, my millimeters clearly so I know what my units of my answer are. Now, are we going to have companion problems in exams? Uh, no, but you will have companion, you will have problems on your exam just like them. That's why they're so useful to do. Good question. <clears throat> okay, so we just did another unit conversion problem. Now let's finish this problem because we also have to convert it to, mi to kilometers or kilometers. I have meters, so I'm going to start with this now. And I have memorized that one kilometer equals one times 10 to the plus three meters. And again, I can cancel my units out. And this time I've got to divide by one times 10 to the plus three. So 0.0962 divided by one exponent three. And of course I don't hit the minus the plus minus sign now because I just want it as one x one times 10 to the plus three. And I hit my equal sign. And I get 9.62 times 10 to the minus fifth. And I get units of kilometers or kilometers. Okay, 
So that's hey, and you'll see homework problems just like this. It will ask you to convert units and then enter your answer into Blackboard uh, as well. Um, let's do C. C says convert 10 centimeters squared to millimeters squared. The number in the problem is our given. For my given, I'm just gonna write G now. G, 10.0 centimeters squared. Now I need a unit conversion. <clears throat> And uh, I'm going to do, so I know that one centimeter equals one times 10 to the minus two meters. And I know that uh, one millimeter equals one times 10 to the minus three meters. And I'm not done yet, but that's my setup so far. Now, nobody's asked yet, but I'm going to tell you, uh, I'm going to ask the question, do you have to do the problems in exactly the same way that I do them? And now I will answer that question. No, you don't have to do them in the same way at all. If you have a better way of doing this problem, and I would suggest there is an easier way, if you have memorized that one centimeter equals 10 millimeters. Like then you could do this in one step. And doing it in one step is fine. All I will ask is that when you have, uh, that when you turn in work to me, whether it's on homework and exam, quiz or whatever, that if the pro, so that you always 